it's another Wednesday and welcome back again to my temporary studio with another simple demonstration project with some tips you can use for your own art making. Tonight it's gel printing and collaging in an art journal. <music> The first thing after my gel press gel plates I recommend is a glass cutting board. It's a great surface to place your gel plate on. As you'll see later, the gel plate will stay helpfully attached to it and the feet on mine keep it from sliding around on my work surface. There will be a link to the cutting board I am specifically using and to my Amazon storefront where you can find other materials I recommend. Also links to Blick Art Materials because that is where I typically buy my Liquitex Basics paints, which are my favorite, and my golden brand glazing liquid. These two colors are bronze. I typically prefer the copper and cadmium yellow medium hue, one of my go-tos. If you are going to get into gel printing, you really should have brayers in multiple sizes. The narrow ones are great for blending colors and getting rid of harsh edges if you don't like them. So here is one option to get your color from your plate to your art journal. Usually you see me lay my paper on my plate. I'm just laying down a background color and you don't have to put your paper onto your plate. You can put your plate onto your paper. The drawback of doing that this way is I got fingerprints in both sides of my print. Instead of cleaning off my plate or my brayer, I decided to spread out what was left of the bronze to create a warm glow in my next layer, for which I used gorgeous deep violet and Payne's Gray. If you are used to working with layers on the gel plate, you may be concerned that I'm just going way too dark and way too soon. And maybe you're right, but I do like my results. Another but, if you are thinking that that layer of paint is too thick, you are absolutely correct. I got out my other five by seven gel plate to use instead of a roll off sheet of paper. I pulled off some of the excess paint and then it was time for some fun texture. In this case, it is a cheap scrubby sponge thing from a dollar store. I could get one with a handle for $2 or I could get a pack of six without handles for a dollar. So yeah, you can see which one I went with. I do really like this color. And here's a demonstration of using your art journal like I typically do paper and laying it on top of your gel plate. It does allow you to apply pressure differently. It does make it difficult to line things up, which I didn't do very well. There are tools you can buy to line up along the top corner of your plate to register your designs. Some people also tape their paper above their plate and use it like a hinge to put the paper down on the plate and then back up. I typically eyeball things, but this shows how it's difficult to eyeball if you use the plate the way you typically see it used. There appeared to be enough wet paint left on the plate to pull this loveliness with a piece of tissue paper. And I chose to use Payne's Gray by itself for a dark top layer. As you can see, there was still some violet on my brayer and double speeded the brayering. Then I got out a collection of circles to make circles. I'll run my dithering at a double speed also. This was actually quite enjoyable. There's always something about circles and removing paint, really. 
I have to say, the little water bottle cap was the most difficult because there wasn't much to grab onto. So if it got a little stuck, it was very difficult not to get my fingers in the paint to get it unstuck. And those two spots I left are pretty visible here. Sometimes one side of a circle making implement works better than the other. At this point, I wanted to make sure my top pattern wasn't too fine. I needed to have lots of clear space on the gel plate in the paint. So there was more for my interesting background to show through. By the time I finished with my circles, I could tell that my paint had started to dry too much to be able to just pull neatly, cleanly, which is something you just get used to recognizing. So I decided to let it dry totally and pull it with a layer of gloss medium. Something else you can get on too thick, but also too thin. And if it's too thin, you'll pull off your paint layer, double speeded that of course. And here is another great thing about using a glass cutting board for your gel plate. Even for prints you don't apply like this, you can get a sneak peek of how it will look. But how convenient is this? Of the three methods I've shown you for applying a gel print to an art journal page. This is clearly my favorite. Glass cutting boards are a great tool for gel printing. I did my best to make sure it was fully in contact with my page. That is something that's easier using a single sheet of paper on top of the gel plate, but this isn't a single sheet of paper. Also, because this is two layers that need to pull at the same time, this needs to dry. And while it dried, I added both gloss medium and some bronze. To pull the deep violet, I had patterned on my roll-off gel plate. The bronze went further than I had intended it to. I only wanted a glow. And here is a roll-off sheet. And in my effort to not have too much, I did end up with a little too little in one spot and pulled some of my violet off. This also has to dry thoroughly because it is multi-layered, even if it's just one layer of color and one pull layer. Again, on tissue paper, as with the other spare print, if you will. And the roll-off sheet has a nice sheen, along with interesting areas of purple. The tissue paper, being thinner and having one side exposed to air, was of course drier well before the art journal. This turned out interesting. The Liquitex Basics Deep Violet really is a gorgeous color. And although I typically prefer copper, the bronze does work well with this. You can see the glow and the bald spots, but I will definitely be able to use this. The first step in removing the gel plate from the journal page is to remove the glass cutting board. And you really need to be sure that your gel plate is already, well, not your gel plate per se, but the print is well adhered to your page. And I think this came out pretty well for an experimental demo piece. It's difficult to get a true feel for the depth of the image or the richness of the color on camera, but you can get an idea of it. I like it. And it has another page next to it, and I have some great papers made in the creation of the print. So, you know what I need to do. Collage, of course. I already have a cohesive color palette and my water brush pen, if you remember from last week's video tip, is great for trimming tissue paper. I line the edge that I want to trim my paper along and easy peasy. And let's speed things up again to keep them from getting tedious. The things to take away from this part of the video, well, first is play. Intuitive collage making is not taking too much time to over plan things. You can't learn what you like and how things work without 
but also finding out what you don't like and what doesn't work. Here you can see that one thing that does work is the water pen over painted tissue paper also. Whether or not you have a gel plate, you can certainly make many types of collage papers. Another tip is that nice torn edge there. If you want to get that raw paper look, tear the paper away from the edge you want to have that paper edge look. And back to the endless types of collage paper you can create. There are plenty of examples in my 100 collage papers videos and shorts. Here I am using the adhesive I always use for my tissue paper collage, Golden Brand Satin Glazing Liquid. I have found it is far less sticky for my fingers than any of the other mediums I have tried, and I like that it's not super shiny. As you may have noticed, I also used my water spray bottle to wet the tissue paper so I could adhere it smoothly. As I said last week, this is particularly important for larger pieces. I didn't with the narrow strips because I knew they would go down at least relatively easily anyway. And here is my two-page spread. If you want to play with intuitive collage making, find some papers that you have that coordinate. If you're going to make papers, use a limited color palette, which I also have videos about. Have fun! Make art! I'm so glad you're here. If you're feeling inspired to make your own art, give me a thumbs up. Kind comments, always appreciated. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, as well as keeping you up to date with what I'm doing. That will also help YouTube see that my content is worth sharing with more people. Thank you.